Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am going to talk about the brave women of India who had great contributions in the history of India. The Rani of Jhansi, who was born on the 19th of November 1835 in Kashi, who is an epitome of courage, knowledge, bravery. Mani Karnika Tambe was born in a Maratha family and had a lot of importance in the struggle of independence for India. Rani of Chasi is considered to be one of the greatest freedom fighters of India who had huge contributions in the Indian Revolt of 1857. Her father's name was Moro Pantambe and mother's name Bhagirathi Sapre. At age 4, her mother had passed. Mani Karnika's father was the commander-in-chief of the war which was under the Peshwa Baji Rao II in the Bitur district. Manu was homeschooled and she was able to read and write. She was fond of outdoor activities like shooting, horsemanship, fencing, etc. At the age of 14, she got married to the Maharaja of Jhansi, Gangadhar Rao. In 1842. After marriage, she was called as Lakshmi Bai and had a son called Damodar Rao in 1851 when he died after four months. King Gangadhar also died in the year 1853, but before he died, he had adopted the son of his cousin. His name was Anand Rao, who was renamed again as Damodar Rao. Meanwhile, Lord Dalhousie had implemented the doctrine of lapse. According to the doctrine of lapse, if a king dies without a legal heir, then his kingdom will be annexed by the British rule. Lord Dalhousie wanted to annex the kingdom of Chasi because the king had died without leaving a natural and legitimate heir, but he had adopted a son. As per the rule, the Rani was granted an annual pension and was asked to leave the fort of Chasi. Meanwhile, there was a revolt of independence in 1857 which broke out in Meerut. The British forces under Sir Hugh Rose arrived in Chasi fort in order to capture it in 1858. He demanded the Rani to surrender or else he would destroy it. But Manu, the Rani of Chasi, refused to surrender. She said that we will fight for independence. In the words of Krishna, we will, if we are victorious, enjoy the fruits of victory, or if we are defeated and killed on the field of battle, we shall surely earn eternal glory and salvation. So the Rani chose to revolt against the British rule rather than surrender. Two weeks there was a battle which went on and Rani led an army of both men and women who fought valiantly against the British. Even though the army fought courageously against the British, but unfortunately, Chasi lost the battle. The Rani then tied her infant on her back and escaped to Kalpi on a horseback. Along with Tanti Atop and other rebel soldiers, the Rani was able to capture the fort of Gwalior. Then she proceeded to Morar, which is in Gwalior, to fight against the British because it was a cantonment of the British rule. Now the Rani died fighting as a soldier at the age of 23. Dressed as a soldier, she died on the 18th of June, 1858. Sir Hugh Rose commented after the death of the Rani that the Rani was remarkable for her beauty, cleverness and perseverance. She had been the most dangerous of all rebel leaders. Another remarkable female figure of Indian history is Ahilya Bhai Holkar, who was born on the 31st of May 1725. She was the Rani of Indore, which was under the Maratha regiment. So Rani Ahilya Bai Holkar was the Holkar queen of Malwa region. She was one of the visionary rulers of India. She had no royal 
lineage and used to live a simple life she had a very simple upbringing she did not belong to the royal family she was born in the village of chaundi which is in jamkhet ahmednagar in maharashtra her father's name was mankoji rao shinde he was the head of the village where she resided and learned how to read and write while ahilya was staying in chaundi malhar rao holkar who was from the holkar family of indore was visiting that place he was highly impressed by ahilya's gesture of kindness and as she was feeding the hungry and the poor at the temple he married her to his son khande rao holkar after her husband's death she gave up all the desires and decided to perform sati but her father in law malhar rao holkar had stopped her from performing the sati but after his death in 1766 the grandson male rao holkar became the ruler of indore thereafter her son's death ahilya bai became the ruler of indore she was well trained in military affairs and also capable to run the administration ahilya bai had captured the gohat fort of gwalior and she also defended her realm as well as kingdom from the rajput raids transformed indore from a very small village to a very prosperous and beautiful city ahilya bai was beyond her time and also developed the infrastructure of the malwa region she had introduced many projects donated funds for hindu temples and also prepared and developed ghats tanks wells pilgrimage centers and embellished and beautified kashi gaya haridwar somnath ayodhya mathura dwarka patrinath rameshwaram as well as jagannath puri she was a social reformer and helped many farmers merchants and also implemented proper taxation system and feudal rights her capital was maheshwar and she encouraged various forms of literature art music dance industries patronized marathi poetry as well as also encouraged various poets like the marathi poet of that time called moropant and sanskrit poet who was called as khushali ram she also set up a textile industry at maheshwar itself